Well, welcome back, folks. As you can tell, I'm out here outside, and that's pretty much where I live. Dakota Dog and myself are out here because I want to show you something. And what that is, is the overall setup of my sawmill. What you're looking at behind you is probably something you've seen before. If you've seen my other videos, that's the hillbilly hideout. That's, uh, that's a sign my dad made for me, so thank you to him. Um, this is a spot I come to to mill all my lumber. What I'm going to do today is take some measurements, give you an overall look at what the mill does and how I do it. And hopefully that makes life a bit easier for you, especially if you want to make some sort of an easy lean-to structure like I have without the need for a lot of lumber, a lot of equipment, and uh, a lot of time. So here we go. I'll show you how that works. So first impressions of this thing, if you haven't seen it before, you may say to yourself, gee, that looks like a big area you had to cover. And it is a pretty big area. But it's not a lot of work because it wasn't a huge investment in materials or time. There's no formal foundation there. And to be honest, I only have a few nails into it. All the materials here, aside from the steel roof and the strapping, are from the forest. Those posts, all of them, including all the rafters, are red pine logs. I cut them right from the bush. In fact, I cut them almost right where they're sitting. I cut them based on their diameter. I wanted a minimum six inches for the rafters and I think I did about seven inches for the post, but I cut them in order to use them right here on site. Now, if we look at overall dimensions, from that corner to this corner, the overall length is 36 feet. The overall width from front to back is 13 feet. The overall height to the bottom, excuse me, to the top of that, that beam there is seven and a half feet. To the top, right where Coda is, the top of that same beam right here, we're looking at about six and a half feet. So we only have a one foot drop, but with the steel roof, I'm able to get up there and from time to time I take the snow off, but I've even had times where we get two, three feet of snow and because of the spacing of the rafters, I've got no problems at all. So if you guys have a look over my left shoulder here, you're going to notice that I've got some red pine rafters. Those red pine rafters are spaced two feet on center. I've also got some strapping and that's what I'm going to secure the steel roof to. If we were to get a few feet, like four or five feet of snow piled up there and we get a heavy rain, well, then we're getting a bit dicey. So I get on up there from time to time, get her cleared off. And I haven't had problems in a few years that this has been up. Now, this is not an engineering marble by any means. And I'm talking about the shelter. Some of the magic with this shelter is its ease of use and ease of installation. See this post here? This post is nailed to the beam at the top, as is every other post to that beam. But this post is sitting on a floating foundation. There's just a piece of concrete block down under all this snow here that this post rests on. Another consideration you guys should probably make if you're going to rig up something like this, think about the distance between two of your posts where you're going to bring logs in to have milled. I need to have a post here because it has to span the gap. This, this beam can't just go 36 feet with a post on each end or it'll collapse. I have to have posts along the way. The opening size there is going to determine what size lumber I can mill on my mill. So what I did was I made this post removable so that in the nice months when we don't have snow load up there, I can remove this post to increase the opening from that post all the way to this post. Therefore, I can actually get a 17 foot piece of wood in there to match the approximately 17 piece of lumber that I can mill. Now, the last thing about this setup, which is kind of unique, and you may have seen it before, you may not have, is my way of collecting water. I needed a way to get water out here because I'm nowhere near any type of running water. And so I came up with this. Obviously, it's covered in snow and ice, but this is a piece of eaves trough. This eaves trough collects rainwater that runs off the steel roof. The rainwater makes its way all the way down the eaves trough, all the way down this piece of big O pipe, and right into that barrel. If that barrel wasn't, oh, come on back to me. Yellow, where are you? If that barrel wasn't completely frozen, that would be my source of water. That's where I get it from with the pump. Check out my other sawmill videos and you'll see how I use these little drill pumps. There's a drill pump in order to get the water from that barrel into my mill. So that's just about it. That's my basic setup. This thing is definitely not, uh, 
I don't know, it's not that fancy. It's something I wanted to get up quickly and I was just going to test it out to see if it worked. And so far this is on, uh, I don't know how many years, but it's been a few and it's lasted. So I think it'll last a few more. As you can tell, up where the dog is there, the logs come in that position. They get set on those raised bunk platforms there. And then I roll them right down onto my mill. Where the offcuts come, so typically the last, um, the uh, outsides of the logs, they come into this pile. And I have a little runway where I can get my tractor right around here to pick this stuff up. So that's overall the setup. Pretty slick. I wouldn't say it's anything uh, overly fancy, but it does the trick for me. And if you're probably wondering why I'm not out here milling right now, well, things are pretty much froze solid. And I don't know about you, but uh, we get a ton of snow here and it makes life quite miserable to get out here and have to dig things out every other day. So I tend to hibernate a little bit with the sawmill. I'm getting the itch though, just coming out here and looking at it. So I might have to scratch that itch and get back out here and uh, maybe I'll take some time, move some snow, scratch some ice and fire up that mill. So if you guys want to see what a 17 foot sawmill bed looks like with a 36 foot roof structure, this is it. This thing, my HM130, has your typical bed length with one extension. Pretty sure that puts it at just about 17 feet. That, that way, if I have 17 feet with a 36 foot roof, I have a little bit of overhang off both ends. This end, I tend to store a bit of already cut lumber. That end, I store my little makeshift workbench. Anyways, guys, I don't know if that's the most hillbilly thing you've seen in a while, but this thing works for me. So don't laugh because it works. And at the end of the day, for me, it's not stupid if it works. So take that, uh, take that with a grain of salt. And also my disclaimer, don't build this if you don't feel confident that your design is going to work. I don't want you guys putting something up that's going to collapse on your head and then you guys message me when you're in the hospital. So guys, that's it for me here today. Coda Dog and myself are going to get out of here. So maybe we'll get back out to the sawmill before long. But I tell you, it is pretty frustrating every time we wake up and see a new snowfall and think about all the things we'd have to dig out out here. Anyways, we'll get back out here and that hopefully won't be too long from now. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time.